In the last few lectures, we learned how to communicate between two related components. We learned that we can pass data from the parent component to child component using custom property binding and at input decorator. And we can pass data from the child component to parent component using custom event binding and at output decorator. But what if the two components are not related to each other? What if the two components are sibling components? How we can pass data between sibling components or non-related components? That's what we are going to learn in this lecture. So here in our application, we have this search box. Now, whenever the user types something inside this search box, we are assigning that value to the search text property of the search component. So if I open this container folder here, in there we have this search folder and in there we have search component. And in that component, we have a property called search text. So whatever value the user enters inside this text box, inside this search box, that value gets assigned to this search text property. For that, on the input element, on this search text, we are using two-way data binding. Then in the web page, we are also displaying a list of products. And this list of product is available inside the product list component. So here we have the search component and before that we also have this product list component. So if I open this product list component class, here we have an array of products, a list of products. We are storing that list of products inside this products array and we are displaying the products from this products array in the web page. Okay, so we have our products array inside this product list component class and we have the search text property inside this search component class. Now what we want is whenever the user types something inside this search box based on that text we want to search the products. So for example let's say if I type Nike here in that case it should only show me those products whose name contains this Nike. So in this case these products should be displayed in the result. But then if I scroll down these products does not have Nike in their name. So these products should not be displayed here. Only those products whose name contains the text which we have typed inside the search box, only those products should be displayed in the web page. Those products should be searched and displayed. Now in order to do that, what we'll have to do is, since we are assigning this value, which the user has typed inside this search text box, we are assigning it to the search text property. And based on this search text property, we want to filter products from this product array. So we need to pass this data, the data which we are storing inside this search text property to this product list component. Now we are using this search component and this product list component inside this container component. So if I go to the HTML of this container component here, you will notice that here we have our search component and here we have our product list component. And these two components are not related to each other in any way. These components do not have a parent child relationship. So we know that we can pass data from the parent component to child component using custom property binding and we can pass data from the child component to parent component using custom event binding. But these two components do not have any relation between them. So how can we pass data between such components which are not related to each other? Well, for that, we can use a combination of custom property binding and custom event binding. Let's understand this diagrammatically. So here we have our container component, which is the parent component for this product list and this search component. So what we want is from this search component, we want to pass data to this product list component. Now, in order to do that, what we can do is first, we can use custom event binding to pass data from the search component to the container component. So from the search component, we will pass the data which we are storing inside the search text property to this container component. And then from the container component, we will pass that data to this product list component using custom property binding and at input decorator. Now, we do have techniques to achieve it in a more simpler way but we have not talked about it yet. Basically for this, we can also use services, but we have not talked about services yet. So let's try to pass data between two non-related components with the concepts which we already know. Basically using the concept of custom event binding and custom property binding. So let's understand this practically. 
so first we want to pass data from the search component so from here to the container component so to this component okay for that we are going to use custom event binding so for the custom event binding what we do is let me close these files okay let's only open search component.ts file so basically this search component class and in this search component class this search component is the child class so in the child class we need to do three things first we need to create an event let's go ahead and let's do that we have already learned how we can create an event so here let's create an event and let's call it maybe on search text changed okay and we have learned that in order to create an event to the property we need to assign an instance of event emitter class okay and in order to use this event emitter class we need to import it from angular slash code library so in this way we are creating an event now we have also learned that when an event is raised with that event we also emit some data so in this case when this on search text change event is raised we want to emit some string data basically we want to emit the value which the user has typed inside the search text box so for that let's specify the type of data which this event is going to emit in this case it is going to emit the data of type string okay so in this way we have created the event now here we can also explicitly go ahead and we can specify the type of this property so in this case it is going to be of type event emitter okay and it is going to emit a data of type string all right so here we have created an event now we need to raise this event and when do we want to raise this event we want to raise this event whenever the user starts typing something inside this search text box okay so with every character which the user inputs in this text box we want to raise our custom event this event so whenever the user types something inside this text box an input event will happen so for each input event we want to raise our custom event for that let's go back to vs code and let's go to search component.html and there on this input element let's go ahead and let's bind input event so every time the input event happens we want to execute a method and let me go back to search component.ts let me copy this name and let me simply call it search text changed instead of calling it on search text changed and i'm going to call the method on search text changed okay let's go ahead and let's create this method inside our search component class all right and from within this method we want to raise this event so for that we can say this dot search text changed dot and in order to raise the event we need to call emit method okay and we also want to bind this event in the parent component so for that we also need to decorate it with at output decorator okay and in order to use this at output decorator we need to import output from angular slash go now whenever this event will be emitted with that event we also want to emit some data and the data which we want to emit is basically the data stored in this search text property so this search text property is going to store the data the value which the user has typed inside the search text box and we want to emit that value so for that we can go ahead and we can emit that value from here by passing that value to this emit method so now what will happen is whenever this event will be raised this value will be emitted the value stored in the search text property will be emitted so in the child component what we have done in the child component first we created an event then we are raising that event for each input event which is happening for that we have binded this input event to this method and inside this method we are raising that event this search text change event so this is all we need to do in the child component now let's go to the parent component and the parent component in this case is container component and in this container component we are going to create a property let's again call it maybe search text you can call it anything but i'll simply call it search text it is going to be of type string and initially let's assign it with empty string okay 
Now we want to assign this search text property with the value which is stored in the search text property of this search component class of this child component class. For that, let's go to container component.html. There on the search component, let's go ahead and let's bind our custom event. And the name of our custom event is search text change. Let me copy this. Let's go to container component.html and there let's bind that event. And to bind an event, we need to wrap it within parentheses like this. And then to this, let's go ahead and let's assign a method. And let's call this method maybe set search text. Again, you can name it anything, but I'll simply call it set search text. Let's go ahead and let's create this method inside the container component class. Now, what do we want to do inside this method? Basically, whenever this event will be raised, it is going to emit some data. It is going to emit the data which the user has typed inside the search text box. And that data will be stored inside the dollar event variable. So we are going to pass that dollar event variable to this method. And then let's go back to container component.ts. And there, let's specify a parameter for this set search text. Let's call it maybe value. And we know that this is going to be of type string because the data which this event is going to emit, it is of type string. So this dollar event, it is going to store a string value and we are going to assign that string value to this value property. And now all we want to do is we want to assign this search text property. For that, we can say this dot search text equals that value. And in this way, now in the container component, in the parent component, we have access to the search text value, which the user has typed inside the search text box. So in this way, we pass data from the search component to the container component using custom event binding and at output decorator. Now we want to pass that data, that search text value from the container component to product list component. And for that, we are going to use custom property binding. So let me go ahead and let me close this search component.html and also search component.ts. Now let's go ahead and let's open product list component.ts. Let me scroll down. And here let's go ahead and let's create a new input property. Again, I'll call it search text. Now, if you think this is confusing for you, then you can try naming it something different. But since this property is going to store the same value in all the three components, in the container component, in the search component, and in the product list component, that's why I am giving them same name. But you can also provide a different name for that. It's not mandatory that you specify the same name in all the components. Okay, and here it is going to be of type string. And initially again, I will assign it with empty string. Now for this search text property, we want to receive some value and we also want to bind it with some TypeScript code. So for that, we are going to decorate it with at input decorator. Now in order to use this at input decorator, we need to import it. So let me scroll to the top and let's go ahead and let's import it from angular slash go. Let's again scroll down. Okay. All right, so this is our input property. Now let's go ahead and let's use this property where we are using this product list component and we are using this product list component in the container component. So if we go to container component.html, there we have this product list component. Here, let's go ahead and let's use that property and let's also bind it. And for the property binding, we need to wrap it within square brackets. And then to this, we want to assign the value which is stored inside this search text property. So let me copy it and let's specify it here. And in this way, now in the product list component also, the value which the user has typed inside the search text box that will be available. So now all we want to do is we want to filter the products based on that search text. For that, let's go to product list component.html. And here for now, let's remove this ng if. So using this ng if we are filtering our product. 
so for now let me remove it from here maybe i'll cut it from here and i'll paste it here for your reference let me comment it okay and here let's again use ngf directive and since ngf is a structural directive we need to use a strict before it and here we want to check if prod dot name so this will give us the product name dot contains and to this contains method let's specify the search text property and here we have an error and it says property contains does not exist on type string so here instead of contains we can use includes and before checking that let's also convert this name to lowercase then we will check whether that name contains this search text or not now initially this search text will be empty string and none of the product name contains empty string right so in that case initially when the page loads it will not display any product to solve that problem let's first check if this search text if it is equal to empty string okay and then let's use or operator so if the search text is empty string in that case we want to display all the products so in that case this condition will return true and it will not check the second condition and it will display all the products but in case if the search text is not empty string in that case this condition will be checked and in that case this ng if will display only those products in the result whose name contains the search text which the user has typed in the search text box let's see that let's save the changes here let's go to the web page and here let me go ahead and let me start typing something so maybe i will type nike so now it should only display those products whose name contains nike in it as you can see all these products have nike in it okay if i say maybe adidas we don't have any product like that maybe let me try something else uh, so for example maybe pixel so we have only one product for that maybe a fester so with that name also we have only one product so as you can see whatever we are typing inside this search text box based on that the result is displayed if i don't type anything inside this search text box in that case all the products will be displayed okay let me search for this sshl so let's say sshl so with that all the products are displayed here so there are three products which starts with that name so that has been displayed here all right so in this lecture we learned how we can communicate between two components which are not related to each other for that we use a combination of custom property binding and custom event binding this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day